So now my hi my everybody and thank you all for coming along tonight. I appreciate that the sun is out still because late evenings and that you might have had better things to do. I keep thinking I should be out in the garden doing some weeding, but uh, no, I'm in here chatting with you and doing this presentation. So tonight, and I'm just going to quickly share my screen with you. Tonight's presentation is going to look at what we achieved in 2023. So in case you missed it, and then we're going to have a sneak peek into 2024. Now, I have to say I did base the 2023 on the presentation I did this time last year on what you might have missed. And I was quite pleased to see that most of what we said was coming the last year actually arrived. So fingers crossed we have the same outcome for 2024. But it was quite a big year in 2023 and a lot of things happened. The first one that we already had up and going when I did this presentation last year was the back issues of the New Zealand genealogist. So that is a, a great resource. It might not necessarily be, you know, when it talks about technology, things that you <laughs> are going to be relevant, but there are still some great stories and information about different record sets that are, are available out there and so uh you know go and have a look at them i did do an article in the march genealogist magazine last year about a few things i'd found when i had a little dig in around so uh, you should go and have a look at them in terms of other journals that we have out there we keep adding more and more family history society journals from other countries because we have these reciprocal arrangements so we have a new one from canada from being british columbia and we also have some irish ones and i did because i had a few moments of spare time over the holidays have a look and there's some fascinating stuff in some of them so i really you know encourage you to go and have a look if that's your geographical area of interest for your research. You never know what you might find. People might be writing about your family and those sorts of things. So always interesting things in there to learn. Now, February was a big month because we launched the email service for the new NZSG certificates collection. And it's been very successful for those members who've taken advantage of it. They've saved about $50,000 in the first six months. It's a great way to get good value for money out of your membership. I found that I find it useful because I can get certificates of sort of the wider parts of the family that I might not think of getting certificates for if I have to pay for them. And those sorts of things can also add interest into your family. You see who's witnesses at weddings and, you know, other details that might help you in your research or just might fill out the story of your family. And the other thing, we've had a lot of feedback. It's faster than the BDM service. so. You should have a look on the Kiwi Collection Index or you can do a lookup of surnames and see if there are any there that are relevant to you. The Kiwi Collection had a humongous year last year. We had the update in July where we added three layers of access. So now you can be a subscriber and see everything. We moved some of the collections into the member space and one of those that we added in there was the index to the cemeteries collection. And if you're not a member, you can sort of get a little teaser and get some idea of, you know, what might be in the Kiwi collection, knowing that you're missing out on quite a lot more. Then of course, in December, we did the big update and we added images. So we've added the images of the first families collection and the cemeteries collection, which are all available to subscribers. So this is a great step forward and means that when we start talking about 2024, what are we going to do? So the plan is more images. We do have to, of course, be concerned with privacy and copyright, and that may limit some of the things that we're able to attach to the Kiwi collection. But of course, there's a huge number of people out there beavering away doing more records. So that's something also to look out for in 2024. And if you've got any ideas about things that you might like to see now that we can attach images. So I think it's JPEGs and PDFs are the two main file formats that we can attach. If you've got any ideas, do come forward and we'll have a, a think about what we can add to it. 
One of the collections we added in December was an index to the Lakinwa Surviving Soldiers Project. So if you were came to the presentation in November, you would have seen Christine Barbour talking about this project. And it was an amazing project. There's about 25,000 names that they managed to collect on it. And then there was a little bit, little extra sentence in the project plan, which was brought to the board that talked about biographies. So uh, we're thinking about this and thinking about how it might be done. Uh, it probably will be done on an ad hoc basis. So people who find family members in there will be encouraged to submit a biography of the person on the index. But we haven't worked the details out yet and we are looking for someone who might like to lead the project. Is it you? You can always get in touch with me and uh, volunteer. Also last year we added in a set of overseas resources. So these are aimed at people who, well, or you when you start doing your research outside of New Zealand. And for those of you that are, uh, have been doing it for a while, you know, just might help that there might be some links in there that you didn't know existed. And so they're just a starting off point because there are a huge array of resources on other countries. If you've done some research in a country that we haven't yet covered and you'd like to contribute a resource, then please get in touch because we are quite happy to expand the collection. We have, it's been a bit sort of um, European centric at the moment and that we have done Australia and sort of British Isles in Europe, but we would like to expand it if we could. So if you've got any more that you'd like to add, please get in touch. Coming in 2024 is going to be the New Zealand equivalent of this. So we've been working on this for quite a while and uh, the library are inputting, you know, information on what we have in at the FRC in Auckland. And so this is going to be a guide to where to find resources in New Zealand. And it's currently a 40 page document. So it's going to be quite big once it's done, but hopefully it will be coming out soon. Now, the other thing that we added to a lot last year were these presentation recordings. So this one, the monthly presentations, you should go and have a look at them. We've covered all sorts of things to do with the NZSG, the library, the Kiwi collection, uh, various, various things. And so you may find something in there that may tell you something you didn't know already. And it's just a good place to get up to date. There are also from Family History Month in Wellington, three out of the four presentations so far. So far. Uh, the fourth one will be coming up soon. So if you weren't able to get to the Wellington Family History Month, which this last year were both online and in person, you can have a look at those presentations. Um, I did one, so you don't need to watch that one. Um, but there are plenty of other interesting things in there. Uh, we have one on DNA and the one that's coming is on Wellington City Libraries and the fourth one is on Digital NZ and Papers Past. So you might find that interesting because that's the uh, two people from those organisations presenting on that. To find them, you need to go to resources slash presentations and this is what the page looks like at the moment, but it will be updated uh, in the next week with this presentation. We also have the presentations from the online writing and publishing group and if you look for them you need to go to resources and then writing and they've done some great presentations too on things that might help you with your writing or if you're looking to publish a family history. The website has had a little bit of a spruce up in the last few weeks so what I have shorthanded to the comms group as the communications working group led by Melanie have been working through looking at the website and giving it a bit of a revamp. So one of the big improvements is there's a quick link section at the top of the home page, just under the banner heading, depending on how big your screen is. When I was looking at it on my laptop today, it was sort of sunk below the line, but uh, just quick ways of getting to things that you might use on a regular basis. They're also working through a sort of general review and update of content to make it both uh, 
useful to you as members, but also if people are coming to look at it as non-members, giving them a bit more of an idea of what they might find in there. So that's looking really good. So I'd like to thank the team and Jan, our webmaster, for getting all that sorted out. And I look forward to what else they come up with. Research services. Don't forget they're always there to help you, whether it's doing a look up from something you found in the Kiwi collection that we hold at the FRC, or a book that's in the library or one of our subscription services, you can do that. We've recently added um, request forms so that when you're asking a look up or a question that you don't forget any details, like, you know, I don't know, the reference number. I always forget things when I'm trying to ask a question. So it's a good thing that will give you a prompt. So they're there and ready to help you with your questions. So don't forget that you can look up anything in the library and there's an online form now to help you do that. The library cat had a good year last year and when she wakes up from her holiday snooze, I'm sure there will be more things in her web page on the internet on the website uh, she does themed collections so it can be worthwhile having a look in to see if there's a book that might be relevant to your research and like i've just said you can send a look up form through and they can let you know what they've got in that book that might be useful to you so keep an eye out for the library cat and of course she's in the e-kit as well now the dna one of the great achievements of last year has been the online DNA interest group, which has the acronym ODIG, which is, I find quite amusing because of the dig bit. And we've been supported by, I have to say, our amazing experts on DNA who are amongst our members. And so Sandra has given me a few slides to talk that she'd like to talk to. So if you just like to unmute yourself or Put your camera on, whatever you'd like to do, and I will click up some slides. So there I've got the Google Classroom. So here's your first slide, Sandra. Okay. Thank beautiful you, Sarah. picture. Um, it is a beautiful picture of me. That's my garden, obviously. I don't, <laughs> I don't, I'm, un, I'm logged in under Te Aumutu and I don't know what's happened. But anyway. Um, Just talk. So, <laughs> Firstly, I'd like to acknowledge the presence at tonight's meeting of two of our members, at least, that I can see, um, Eleanor and Sharon. Um, they're, they're the ones who are the experts. I, I just do a bit of grunt work behind the scenes. Um, but yeah, we are really fortunate with the calibre of the people that we've got on board with this team. It's a small team. Um, we've had one or two people who have, for whatever reason, had to um, pull away from it. And we are also on the lookout for um, volunteers as well. So if you are interested, the email address to contact, and I'm going to keep on repeating this tonight, is online dna at genealogy.org.nz. Okay. So do not forget that email address. So I'm not sure, I, I suspect that the audience I'm talking to in this particular presentation um, isn't necessarily the audience that we're, we want to target. But I've done it so that it's a fairly uh, basic sort of presentation, if you like. Want to focus on how you actually register for ODIG, how you can find the Google Classroom once you have registered, and what is actually in the classroom itself. Okay, I think those are the three things if we can focus on that tonight. Mm -hmm. So what do you want me to do? I can't even give you a wink because you can't see me, but you can <laughs> move on to the next slide. <laughs> there you go. Sarah is controlling this process because it just means it, it reduces the risk of something going wrong if my internet connection goes down. Okay, so I think the key thing to reiterate to start with is this has been developed by NZSG members, for our members, with an interest in DNA as a genealogical tool. It is free to any NZSG member who wants to join. Okay, so to find it, you need to log into the website. Um, to start with, registration is essential, so log into the NZSG website and click on the DNA tab at the top, and then up will pop NZSG Online DNA Interest Group. So you click on that, and onto the next slide, and it's very simple, up comes this button that says join here, 
and you just click on that button. It's, it's a very smooth process that has been developed. Now, the key thing I want to point out here is that once registered, your registration remains in place for as long as you are a member of the NZSG and want to be part of ODIC. You do not need to re-register for every monthly presentation. So as an example, we've had six new registrations since January. Three of those are people who are re-registering and it is really tough on the person who handles that side of things. So please, once you're registered, if you're receiving emails to the monthly presentations, then you are definitely registered and that's all you need to do. Okay, next slide. So once the um, registration form comes up, it's very simple. There's only four questions you need to answer. All of them are essential. Your name, your NZSG number, your email address, and your interest in DNA. So if you just go on to the next slide. Okay, so there's four questions. You've seen the first two. These are the last two. And once you've filled it in, you just need to click on the submit button. And then that goes off magically into cyberspace. Actually, it lands in um, someone's spreadsheet. And once your details have been verified against the NZSG member list, membership list, you'll be sent a link to the Google Classroom. And you'll also automatically be added to the list that gives you 48 hours advance notice of the next live DNA presentation. So we've set this up so people get 48 hours notice and then they get two hours notice of when the presentation is and the link. So we're finding that system's working really well. Right, so the next one is getting into the Google Classroom. So you've been sent a link to Google Classroom. Next slide. Yep. No, is there one before that? Oops. No, that's the next one. Oh, okay, that's fine. Um, we just have to warn you about this. Google Classroom is obviously on the Google platform and Gmail is also on the Google platform. Google Classroom prefers an, a Gmail address. So you potentially could have access issues if you have a different email address, such as Extra, or like I did, metcalf.co.nz, or any other addresses that are not gmail.com. And if it is you in this situation, we do have support that's available for you. So this is why you need to contact Sharon at our email address, online dna at genealogy.org.nz. If you are able to, set yourself up with a Gmail address, life is going to be a lot smoother for you in terms of accessing it and for Sharon and trying to explain how to make this work. So we just, just needed to make you aware of that. And I think um, now that the NZSG is also moving towards more Google Classrooms, they will also require a Gmail address for you to be able to access those. So it does make sense to have a Gmail address that you might use specifically for this sort of purpose, if you don't already have one. Okay. Next slide. Yep. Okay. So once you've got access to the Google Classroom and you've had a little play in there and then come out of it and you want to go back into it, I find the simplest way for me is to just to type Google Classroom into your search engine. And it will come up with different options. So you click on sign in, Google accounts, Google Classroom. And if you already have a Google account with more than one email address, it will ask you which one you want to log in with. And so I need to make sure every time that I log in with my Gmail account. So that's simple. Once you've got everything sorted. Next slide. Now on entry to the classroom by default, you are taken to stream. And stream is which is where all the postings actually go on. We haven't set ourselves up for any postings for members at this stage because we don't have the resources to cope with it. So what you need to do when you enter Google Classroom is actually click on Class Work. That's the next tab over, so on the next screen. And it's in here that all the fun starts. And this is where you're going to find the topics and the resources under classwork. 
and I counted up. There's, we've got 38 different topics, and in each of those topics is a large number of resources that you can have access to. So this is a work in process, and we're going to keep on developing it as we get feedback from, from our members, because this is what we're doing it for. We're doing it to provide a resource that members want. We don't want to put a lot of work into something that no one's going to use. So we're very much reliant on people's feedback in terms of how this actually develops. So that's some, some of the topics. And on the next slide, we're going to see even more topics. So you can see there's quite a variety of all sorts of topics. What we're trying to do is um, particularly develop New Zealand resources. And this is why you're going to find topics like GI Trace, which is all those American servicemen that were out here in the Second World War and left little gifts behind. Um, We've also got Maori and Pacific Island uh, a section. We've got a lot on um, founder effect. Uh, this is what you find in New Zealand with a, a relatively new um, immigrant population. There's been a lot of intermarriage and everything happening there, which has a huge, huge impact on your DNA results. And there we've got lots on oh, the Maori Moana Pacific, I suspect, is also covering a lot about endogamy. Um, in some countries, endogamy is perhaps a bit more unusual, but in New Zealand, it is just part of our life. And we just need to learn to live with it and try and use tools that are going to help us sort that out. So that just gives you an idea of the 38 different topics that we've got. Next slide. There are some things we, in particular, we encourage you to read um, when you do enter the classroom. The first one is the welcome and it explains about the group and how to contact a member of the group. Um, the other thing that's important is um, the potential is there for all email addresses of those who are part of the group to be visible. At the moment, this is turned off, apart from people who are on the team. But you know, in a normal classroom situation, this is set up for, new, for school classrooms, of course, in a normal classroom situation, students would be able to contact each other. And in time, perhaps that's what will happen. But for now, um, that ability has been turned off. We just want you to be aware that that potential is there. The other one is the um, group engagement and community rules. And that's just really setting down some um, expectations about, about the, the site and how we want um, people to interact. The next one. Now, we have started planning ahead in terms of our monthly meeting schedule, and this is where you're going to find the information. It's going to give you a bit of a pricey on what's coming up. We've got the February meeting down there, and when we have our next meeting in mid-February, we'll sort out the March and April presentations. Next slide. This is where you're going... <laughs> A little heart popped up on the screen. This is where you're going to see the recorded monthly meetings. And um, you just click on that and you can go back and listen to the presentations that we've already done. So Eleanor and um, Lorna have done a couple of presentations, really worthwhile ones, um, just about trying to get an understanding of, of DNA and how it actually works and matches and Kepler groups and and, and your centre organ sizes, etc. Good basic stuff that we really do need to learn. The next one is how to research, how to search your resources. We had considered the idea of having a searchable PDF, but there's a huge amount of work involved in producing one of those, and it's got to be constantly updated. So you can search by the topic, come click on the uh, drop down menu few slides further back, click on the topic and then explore what's in there. Or if you can use the standard Windows and Apple shortcut keys. So for instance, if you typed in, um, did a control F and typed in YDNA, it would come up with the YDNA topic list. So it's very easy to find information. But I suggest to start with that you just go through the topic list and actually explore what is actually there to give you a really good idea. And last slide. Okay. 
So, so far we've had about 350 people register with ODIC, which I think is a phenomenal result. Not everyone has accessed the classroom. There's been about 123 people who've accessed the classroom itself. Um, we suspect that the email may have got buried in their inbox. It may have ended up in their spam box. Um, so in January, Sharon is sending out reminder emails to those who haven't yet responded. Um, and if you don't, I mean, the whole, the whole, I guess the, the golden nugget of ODIG is, is the classroom and the resources that are in it. The monthly presentations are a beautiful add-on to it, but it's the resources that are actually sitting in the classroom that are really the, the big treasure with this. So if you're not already registered uh, for the classroom or ODIG, then you're actually missing out on a fantastic learning experience with a lot of free access material. It's also available for you 24 seven. So it doesn't matter if you get up in the middle of the night and decide to do some DNA research, not research, um, learning, then you can, you can certainly do that. You're not gonna disturb anyone. Oops. And uh, again, any queries, contact online DNA at genealogy.org.nz. Do not try and re-register, please. If you have any queries, use that email address. Um, so I really, oh, the, yeah, so this is just, a, it's a work in progress, very much a work in progress. We started getting together uh, in about March last year. We decided to, um, even though the classroom wasn't ready, we decided to go ahead with the monthly presentations anyway, just so that we had a bit of a soft launch and to give people a taster. It certainly took a lot longer than we had anticipated to set the classroom up. And uh, there was a huge learning curve involved in that, but it's, it's there now. It's been open since the 1st of December. And um, yeah, we want, we want you to use it. We want feedback. After the meeting, every monthly meeting, we send out a feedback form because we want to learn from our experience and, and build on what we're doing. Uh, what else was there? So I guess the key thing is to make, if, if you're already receiving emails about the monthly meetings, then you are registered. You do not need to re-register. If you have not received an email about uh, a link to the classroom, then contact online DNA at genealogy.org.nz. Okay, and we'll get that sorted for you. Um, yeah, and I think that's that's pretty much it. I'm happy to ask, answer any questions if anyone does have anything that they want to query or are not sure about. Cool, thank you, Sandra. I mean, I'll, I'll ask the questions at the end because people might have yeah, okay. all sorts yep. of different questions. Sure but thank you very much. Yeah. That I mean, I have to say, I personally am well impressed by all the things that you've managed to do in a really short period of time. So thank you to everybody that's been putting an effort into that. The Google Classroom does look amazing. So it's, there's it's always something a, new to learn. It's been a, it's actually been a really fantastic team to work with. Um, mm -hmm. We're all dedicated to, to making this work. Um, everyone's been going through different stresses in their lives as we've got to the stage and it's about supporting each other really mm -hmm. and just getting there. And I think all yeah. of us on the team feel that, gosh, we're, we're pretty proud of what we've achieved so far in the, in the time frame. Yeah. So thank you to everybody that's been contributing. And if you're not already a member and you've done some DNA, good opportunity to become part of it. Yeah. Righty ho. So if you could switch your camera off again, Sandra, we will... Uh, get back on. So thank you, Sandra, for presenting on that. And now I am going to go back to presentation where we were before. And mm, the next aspect of things of what's been happening behind the scenes. So this is what's been happening in 2023, but will continue into 2024. And that there's been a huge amount of digitizing. So you may have noticed in ECIT, there have been calls to come into the FRC and help uh, 
digitized things that are in there. There are people all over the country that are collecting things for us, and they also digitize them as they go, as well as indexing them. So there's a huge amount of work going on behind the scenes that we kind of don't really see until something gets updated, like the Kiwi collection, or we make a big announcement. But it's great work and I would like to thank everybody that's volunteering and helping on those. I'm going to remind people that Melanie's after people in Auckland for the 13th of February. So uh, details are in tomorrow's e-kit and uh, hopefully if you've got some time, you can pop along and give her a hand. Click on the slide. So coming up this year a few things so we have a strategic projects group which is sort of just starting up it's uh, got four members of the board on it looking at the information we're collecting from a strategic point of view and uh, one of them Greta is very much into shipping records and we do actually have quite an array of information in the FRC and it's kind of a what how are we going to make it more easily available to people so they've got their thinking caps on about what they're going to do with that. So there'll be more details to come about how we might do shipping records. Uh, we ha now have a marketing focus group and we, because I'm on it, I say we are going to be looking at how do we improve our profile out there? How do we encourage new members to join the NZSG? And how do we ensure that current members know that there are things out there that are useful to them and, and use the services and resources that we have available to them. So there's quite a lot of work to be done on that side of things. Um, and if you know of any opportunities to promote the NZSG, do get in touch and let us know. Um, Melanie was chatting before we got started about the way he uh, forgotten the full name of it but it's on this weekend um, at Waihe they have an annual festival and so she's going to be down there with members of the Waihe branch uh, so if something like that's happening in your area do let us know and we'll see if there's a way that we can have a presence there just so we get our name out there and people realize that we have resources out there for them we have been doing a number of introductory courses last year and there is a team currently together that have been building off the work that Gary Phillips did in those introductory courses to build a more modular course. We've had the idea that we're going to you know, build something like this, probably leveraging off also the Google Classrooms and uh, have that available. So they're still working on that and I'm looking forward to seeing what they come up with. And I do know that the DNA team that you've seen Sandra talking about, they're also thinking about uh, how they could do an introductory course for people who've just done their DNA. And that's kind of the end of where we're up to today. So the big question out there, of course, is what else would you like to see? Uh, often the best ideas come from people saying, why don't we do this? And we're going, oh, yeah. We could look at that and see if we can make that happen. So do get in touch if there's got any ideas of things that you'd like us to be able to do, resources you'd like us to provide, um, and we will see if we're able to do it. The other thing I'm going to add, and I, you know, I've said it a few times along the way, and Sandra's said it as well, is do you have a little bit of time? If it's just an hour a month, an hour a week, an hour a day even, um, if you've got lots of time on your hands and you'd like to, you know, give back to the society. Everything we do is run by volunteers. So, you know, myself through the board, all the uh, Sandra and her team and all the resources that you've seen tonight have been put together by people volunteering their time. So if you've got a little bit of time you can spare, we really, really could do with your help because there are always more things we could be doing. So do get in touch with me and uh, we will find something for you to do. And so that's it for the presentation side of things. So thank you for joining us. I'm going to stop sharing my screen when I find the right button, that one there, and throw the floor open to any questions. So if you want to turn your cameras and microphones on to ask the questions, feel free. No questions. I like it when there's no questions because it means it makes me think I've done a really good job. But then nobody got any idea, anything they'd like to add.
Oh, I someone's unmuted themselves. Yeah, me, Sharon. Sharon. Oh, hello, Sharon. Hi. <laughs> Thank you about the shipping project. That's um, that's really good. That sounds exciting. Yeah, there's um, you know, there there's so much out there in terms of shipping, but none of it's in one place. So being able to sort of figure out a way to pull it together. We do actually have a few shipping things we've discovered knocking around in the Kiwi collection. Um, if you search ship, Melanie, was it the surname we discovered was under ship? Um, some records pop up. We were quite surprised on that. So um, yeah, you could start there. Uh, Melanie, you need to. Yeah, there's also lots of um, different types of records held at FRC and things like that. And so um, the plan of the group is to bring them all together in one place. And uh, uh, once we get the protocol underway, call out to all our members and all our branches to try and pull in as many records as we possibly can, because it will only help all of our members. Yeah. Yeah. It's, ex it's exciting. I'm very excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> One of the most frustrating areas because practically everything you look at, you have to know the name of the ship. Mm. And if you have no idea the name of the ship. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. and I, I've often said when I'm, you know, teaching, you know, introductory genealogy that if you, if, you don't know the name of the ship. <laughs> you're going to be quite lucky to find them, mm -hmm. even when you've got the, you know, that amazing resource they've got on archives and things. It's, uh, you know, the people in my family tree that I don't know the name of the ship they came on are the ones I have not found the ships for. <laughs> so, so this will be. It's probably going to be a three-year plan, and it will be involve all members and all branches of NZSG. But the resulting, you know, the end result will be fantastic. So I hope all of you come on board with it once we <laughs> get all the protocol sorted out and how we're going to do it, you know? Yeah. Is um, it's Sandra here? Is um, this building on a lot of the work that Verna Mossing? Yeah. Did? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, at the yeah. moment, um, my lovely <laughs> boys at FRC are scanning all of Verna's um, folders. They're about halfway through at the moment. Um, and along with other records at FRC, that will form the basis for it. Yeah, it's her collection is just an amazing starting point. Yeah. Because of what's in there. Yeah. So, yeah, that's something to look forward to big plan. So has anybody got any questions for Sandra about the DNA or from any of the other DNA people that are lurking here? Um, right. Okay, well, it's still light outside, so you could be out doing a bit of weeding like I really... Just not going to happen tonight. Um, so I'd like to thank you all for coming along tonight. It's been lovely that you can come out. And like I say, there'll be an ECAD out tomorrow. The next presentation next month is going to be a reprise of what Megan did last year, which I always get the name not quite right, but something akin to Treasures in the Depths, which is going to be looking at what we've actually got on the website and how when you're a member and you've logged in there's a hell of a lot more to see than if you're a non-member or you've forgotten to log in so um we're gonna take a, a look around the website next month so if you're free do come along and join us it's on february the 29th so it's the extra day you get this year so uh, hopefully you'll find some time to join us but in the meantime thank you all for coming along tonight and we'll see you next time.